Hello and welcome to the Southern Mountain Kitchen. Today we're making a Southern Breakfast Skillet. Okay, to start with, you're going to need to bake four potatoes in your oven 400 degrees for 45 minutes to get them ready for this process. Then let them cool so it's easier for you to take the skin off without burning your fingers. I find it kind of necessary to bake the potatoes in advance because if you put them straight into the skillet, sometimes they might go hard, not cook properly. So doing a baked potato is best for this. So once you have your baked potatoes, you want to make sure they're completely cool before you cut into them and then take off the outer skin because once we get that skin off, we are going to cut these into cubes which are gonna be used in our skillet. So easy way of doing this is basically just once you get the skin off, cut the potatoes down the center, then flip them over and then cut them again. And then just slice through to make cubes. It's a lot easier that way to get your, your potato cut up. And you're gonna do this all the way through all four potatoes that you cooked. Make sure your cubes are of decent size. You want them to hold up when we're cooking the other ingredients into them. Once you have one cut up, Put it into a bowl to the side because we're going to put this to the side and come back to it later in a skillet you are going to add four slices of bacon which we're going to cook this till it's completely done and then cut it up into one inch pieces now once the bacon is cooked you do not want to discard the grease that's left over in the pan because we're going to use that to season the potatoes when we put them back in so for now you just want to cook your bacon and once it's done, we're going to remove it and cut it. Once again, you can let that cool until it cuts. Um, if you want to add extra bacon to this, you can. I went with five pieces in my pan because one of my pieces was really thin. Generally, like I said, it could be four slices of bacon. Five if you get a really thin piece because you do want the bacon taste in what you're doing. So you want to leave the bacon in for as long as possible to cook on each side. You do not want to bring out bacon that's not thoroughly cooked. Um, just take your time with it. Make sure it's cooked through because there is nothing like uncooked bacon. Um, I add a little oil to mine to get it going. And I mean very little. I mean there's probably like a teaspoon. It just helps to get the bacon frying, plus it's going to give you something to mix in with the bacon grease to stretch it when you're doing the potatoes. So go ahead and flip your bacon as it's cooking. Make sure you're getting it done on each side. So as you're cooking your bacon, you're going to know when you're getting done because you will be getting the spots on it that look like they're thoroughly cooked. Then remove it, set it to the side to cool. Then you're going to add a half a cup of chopped green and red bell peppers and one or two tablespoons of finely chopped onion. I cheated on this and used pepper onion blend, which comes frozen in a bag because if you've seen the price of peppers lately, you know why I do it because buying a bell pepper is insane but the bags aren't really that bad in price so that's why I use what I use so put that in your skillet this is frozen so you're gonna to have to cook it for a few minutes to warm it up thaw it out as it's cooking make sure that you move it around and break up any larger pieces as they warm up they will separate which you really need them to come loose and just keep stirring it through because you're cooking this in the bacon grease because it's seasoning everything we put in at this point. Just a reminder, you don't want the peppers to sit for a very long time in one place in your pan because they will burn on the bottom if they get up to temperature. The good thing about them going in frozen, you have a minute to break them up, move them around, thaw them out before that happens.
Just make sure that when you are moving around your peppers and you think they're a little frozen inside still, keep moving them about until they get to a point where you think they are warm and cooked through before you add anything else to the skillet. As you can see with mine, it's pretty much all breaking up and pretty much cooked through at this point. The best thing about using the bell peppers in this recipe is it makes the food look so good with all the colors that come through with, you know, if you're putting egg and your potatoes and everything to have the splash of color from the red and the green, it's just a really cool thing to see because it looks good. And not only that, it does smell good when it's cooking. All right, so at this point, since my peppers are already cooked, I am going to add in the potatoes that we had from the oven. And just go ahead and put all of them in at once. Now once you get them in, you do want to stir it up to bring the peppers and onions through the potatoes so everything is mixed together because you want to make sure it goes through all of it. Then you're going to add salt and pepper to taste, which means if you don't like a lot of salt, you don't have to use a lot. And if you don't like a lot of pepper, then you don't have to use that either. With mine, I used about a half a teaspoon of each. Then I added a half a teaspoon of garlic powder and then a half a teaspoon of paprika. The paprika will really bring the flavor out in this. Now that you have your ingredients on top, go ahead and mix this through again so the seasoning has a chance to move throughout all of the potatoes and the peppers. Stir it up thoroughly, just kind of go underneath and pull it up and flip it over so that way it's going to mix through. Now one thing you're going to want to do at this point is kind of pay attention to the, the stuff in the pan. You don't want anything to burn, but you do want it to sit for a minute to where the bottom of the potatoes start to get seared to where they get this like golden reddish look to them because when they get that, it's really kicking the flavor in by, you know, totally cooking it through. And this might take a couple of minutes. I suggest giving it at least three, four minutes to just sit there and let it do its thing and then we'll add the next ingredient after it's set for a minute. So I don't know if you can see it, but in my pan, there was like heat coming up through these. That's usually a good sign that you can go ahead and flip them at this point. Because notice, nothing burned, but there is a golden quality to the potatoes that were underneath. That's the secret of getting this really good. The flavor is in there at that point. So what you're going to do at this point is add your bacon back in because we want to get it back in, get it warmed up with the potatoes and the peppers and everything else. So just go ahead and take your cut up pieces, lay them over the top. And once you've gotten all of your bacon back in, then we're gonna stir this up again to make the bacon go through the potatoes and the peppers. All right, so we're gonna let this warm for a few seconds and we're gonna get ready for the eggs next um, you're gonna need three large eggs I kind of just beat mine up like I was doing scrambled eggs it's your choice how you want to do it you could probably fry the eggs in the center of the pan I prefer to do it with scrambled eggs so 
make a reservoir right down the middle and this is where we're going to pour the eggs in. So I would just start at one end, work my way across, then work my way back so that way the eggs are actually completely across the center of the pan. And they're going to start to cook immediately because your pan's already hot. And as this is thickening up, then you're going to start mixing it through the potatoes, bacon, and peppers. And as you can see, I'm just working it in a little bit at a time and pulling the potatoes and all into the egg. And it's not going to take long to cook this egg because your pan is already hot from all the time that it's been sitting on your burner or whatever. And you're just wanting to cook this until your eggs become solid. You don't want runny, slimy looking egg. But it won't take long before it actually cooks up and it's solidified. So just let it sit for a few seconds and then flip it and that way you're going to make sure that the egg in the middle and everything gets mixed through. Because as you can see with mine it's already cooking all the way through. Now as your eggs are sitting there doing their last little bit of solidifying and everything is heated through, the majority of what you're cooking here is pretty much done. There's not much more you have to do except for flip it a couple times to make sure that everything is cooked in the center. And this is going to be the point where we're getting ready to add a cheese to the top of this. Now I added mozzarella cheese to mine. You don't have to do that. You could use cheddar cheese or any cheese that you like. It's just a matter of putting a cheese on top. And with mine, I use a half a cup of shredded mozzarella cheese. And sometimes you have a bag of this in the house, so it's really easy to make this whenever you want because a lot of these ingredients you already have. So just take the cheese and just sprinkle it all over the top of it to where you've covered the whole top with cheese. If you want more cheese, go ahead and add more. That's fine. One thing you can add, you don't have to, is um, sometimes I chop up green onion on top of this after the cheese is melted. Um, it just, it's an added extra. You don't have to, but I do it just for the sake of, and it just, I don't know, I like green onions. You can or you don't have to, it's all up to you. But once your cheese melts on top of what you made, you're pretty much done. This is it, this is your, skillet just go ahead and have your breakfast at this point and this doesn't even have to be a breakfast thing you can make this any time of the day whenever you feel like eating it but here you have it this is what it looks like when it's done a southern breakfast skillet i hope you liked this video and if you did please like and subscribe and i hope to see you soon